Hello, God bless each and every one of you. Today is the 27th day of April. It is 2020. It is Monday afternoon. I hope you're having a blessed day wherever you're at and a blessed start to your week. Today I want to do something just a smidgen bit different than what I usually do. I've always considered myself somewhat of a historian, especially when it comes to uh, wars and conflicts, uh, mainly in the 20th century, uh, from World War I in 1914 all the way up through the end of uh, Vietnam. Uh, I've always been very fascinated uh, studying different conflicts, different battles, different tactics that was used. But uh, since my channel is geared towards the Lord, geared towards the Bible, I want to talk about a conflict today that I find absolutely fascinating uh, and one that does not get the attention uh, that it actually should because of the amazing, uh, miraculous things that occurred uh, during this, uh, you cannot really call it a war even though it, it has the title war uh, in its name. And I want to talk about uh, the Sixth Day War. Now, this is um, started on the, the sixth, or excuse me, the fifth of June, nineteen hundred and sixty-seven, and it ran till the tenth of June, nineteen sixty-seven, and um, it is known as the Six Day War. And of course, I'm talking about is Israel when Israel was invaded by a uh, multiple Arab force. Multiple Arab countries united together, uh, mainly led by the Egyptian uh, armed uh, forces. They had put together the most um, divisions. They put together the most aircraft, you know, this, that, and the other. They make, be, make uh, can't get the words out of my mouth. They basically were your uh, leaders of this uh, Arab army. And they went up against Israel, tiny little Israel. Now, Egypt uh, brought 160,000 troops. They amassed 100,000 of those troops uh, in the Sinai Peninsula on that part of the, the, the border. And then you went down to uh, Syria, which, which had 75,000 troops. And then Jordan, which had 55,000 troops. And Iraqi, uh, they participated in the event of a uh, hundred tanks and they supplied a division of men and in the air you also had the same groups of Arab countries as I've listed but you also had Saudi Arabia uh, and Pakistan and Kuwait uh, and Morocco and Algeria and Libya also um went along with these other nations. So you had a lot of nations going against Israel, and the fact that uh, Israel was just one tiny little nation, which you know, if you know anything about uh, your history, became Israel became a state in 1948. So this is less than 20 years. They haven't even been a state for 20 years yet. 19 years when uh, these nations amassed on its border and attacked. Uh, this was an absolute miracle, uh, by our, by our Lord. Um, in the Bible, it says that God will bless nations that stand with Israel and he will curse nations that go against them. Now, there's no other reason that I can think that that tiny little nation can withstand all of those divisions, all that artillery, all of those tanks, all of those jet aircraft, jet bombers, uh, all of that combined with all of these nations and Israel be able to demolish, literally demolish all of these in a six-day period. There's no other excuse for it other than the fact that the Lord put his hand upon Israel and guided the Israelites into victory. also did the same thing in 1973. But that's a whole separate thing. That was the Yom Kippur War. We'll talk about that a different day. But one thing I have always heard when 
when people that that, that don't believe in God, uh, that that don't want to give God any credit, any glory uh, for anything, especially when it comes to Israel and the Six Day War, and also, as I said, uh, in '73 in the Yom Kippur Wars, as you always hear, all oh, well, the Arab armies had inferior. You know, they had inferior equipment. They had they had inferior pilots. They had inferior tanks. You know, they had, you know, poorly trained this, poorly trained that. That's just not true. Uh, other than um, Jordan, Jordan had a lot of U.S. equipment. Older equipment, yes, but it was still well made, like the N-60 Patton tank, which was an exact which was a tank that we used in Vietnam. Um, so it wasn't some old... Now, yes, they had some some later World War II uh, German uh, Panzer tanks, but for the most part, they were well-equipped by the Soviet Union. Uh, you know, their air forces, a lot of them flew the MiG-21. I don't know if you know anything about uh, these types of aircraft, but you're talking 1967... MiG-21 was was at the precipice, was at the top of what was out there. Uh, the U.S. flew the F-4 Phantom at that time, so that was the main combatant to the MiG-21. MiG-21 was a small uh, jet, single-engine jet aircraft with a delta wing. It was very fast, very maneuverable, and it was an absolute threat. Now, Israel used a lot of French uh, their aircraft was, was uh, a lot of from the Dassault company, and uh, they, they used some U.S. artillery and um, some British tanks. Uh, but for the most part, I always have heard, because nobody, you know, that, that doesn't believe in God, that, that, that don't believe in the Bible, they always want to go to that argument that God had nothing to do with that war. He did not help Israel in any capacity. Because the Arabs were absolutely clueless. They did not know how to fight. Uh, I mean, I've heard everything from, like I said, inferior equipment. They didn't know how to fly their planes. I mean, it was just, it's just ludicrous. It's absolutely insane to think that you would amass such massive forces and nobody knows how to use any of the equipment that they have. Nobody knows how to shoot or fly the aircrafts. You know, it, it, it's just an absolute slap in the face, you know. But this is what you hear from people that don't believe in God or, or don't believe in the Holy Bible. I'm going to, uh, before I end, I want to re re uh, convey a story that I had uh, read a long time ago. This was a book that I had read. This must have been back, uh, it was a real small, short book because I'm not a real heavy reader. I do a lot of do uh, documentaries. Um, but this was something I had read back in high school, and it was on the Six Day War, and it was uh, uh, an, uh, an Egyptian uh, ground soldier um, that was on the ground, and he said he had looked up into the sky, and the sky was almost darkened with just a, a massive armada of aircraft coming in to attack Israel. These were all of the planes from all of the air forces that I had just mentioned, and then some. And he said it was just an absolute awesome display, an aerial display coming in to wipe out their enemy. You know, this was an Egyptian soldier saying this. And he said all of a sudden, they began exploding, just one explosion after another. And, and, and they had thought, that Israel had some type of secret, you know, air-to-air, surface-to-air weapon that they have not heard of. They could not see it. They could not hear it or see it being fired. They just did not know what was happening. These planes were just exploding in the air, one after another, one after another, one after another, to the point that the ones that were left turned around and headed back to the bases where they took off from. This, this is, you know, documented. And they could not figure out why these planes were exploding. It's not hard to figure out when, when you believe in God. And you believe that God can accomplish and can do anything. 
Not some things. God can do anything. And I truly believe that God reached his hand down and was destroying those aircraft that were coming into Israel to bomb it into submission because there was that many aircraft. They were just going to, you know, wipe this, this tiny little nation off the face of the earth. God wasn't going to have anything to do with that. And I've never forgot that, that, um, what that Egyptian soldier said. Uh, now, you know, there's been people that's refuted that over the years that, Oh, he, you know, was seeing things or this. Or that. But then again, I go back to the same people that don't believe in God, that, that um, you know, that are skeptical about everything, especially when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to, to, to God Almighty, our Creator. They want to argue on every little detail. In fact, they have no faith. They have no belief. So I don't expect someone of that ilk to, you know, understand when you don't believe you're never going to understand you're never going to accept and and that's just the way it is but i truly believe without a doubt that god on that particular day when that sky was filled with a myriad of aircraft coming in to destroy the cities uh, uh, of israel especially jerusalem god wasn't having any uh, any part of that and and he started removing those planes one after another out of the sky to the point the ones that were left turned around and went back to the airports from whence they took off. So, uh, it ended on June the 10th, 1967, in a complete and utter rout by the Israeli army. They absolutely, uh, it wasn't, you know, like Israel lost no planes. It wasn't like they didn't lose any soldiers because, yes, Israel absolutely had losses. But if you look at what they were up against... If you look at the divisions and the size and the amounts of the armies and, like I said, the equipment, the planes, the tanks that they were up against, it's an absolute miracle from God himself that he kept his hand over that little nation and they prevailed in six days. That is a six-day war in a very short time. I know I've only spoke 12 minutes on it. I could go hours on these type of things. Um, I think the next one I'm going to do is the Yom Kippur War in 1973, and obviously that was uh, over the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur when that began. And we have some of the same culprits, Egypt, some of the same nations going against Israel. And once again, Israel stood up, God stood behind them, and once again, they swatted away the Arab armies that were trying to invade and attack that tiny nation. Uh, again, I go back to the Bible where, where God says he will keep his hand upon nations that bless Israel, that stand with Israel, and he will curse the nations that go against them. And this is a perfect example, the Six-Day War in June of 1967, of God keeping his word and doing exactly as he said. Take care. I hope you enjoyed my video. Subscribe if you like my videos. Hit the like button. And if you don't, that's okay. Come back, try another video. You might like it again down the road. Take care. God bless. And remember, pray for this nation. Pray for our leaders. Pray for each other. Take care. Bye-bye.